Good to see everybody tonight. This is the last night of Principles of Faith. We're going to have two lecture sessions, about 45 minutes apiece. And then, you're going to take a test. You can call me uh, at 502-525-1400. If you're looking at this, you know, though, after the fact, you're making up class sessions, looking at it online, don't call me. Because I'll be somewhere else. I won't, I won't be here. Um, but if, if, if you need to ask questions during the test, please feel free to call me. I probably won't answer you, but you can call. Um, there, it's a test. It's just, we'll see how you do. You do get to use your notes on this test. This is, since this is the first class, this is kind of a lot of people's freebie. Uh, this is just getting back into it. You know, we've had people with, do not have test anxiety tonight. You don't need to have test anxiety. Uh, but what I'm going to let you do is use your notes for this that, uh, that, we've been, that we've been going through. And so, um, let me just take a little, I'm going to do a little housekeeping here. Uh, for our location, for who's here, and I know Henry's coming. So we are going to be on page 29 in your notes. Page 29, like I said, we've got two sessions tonight, uh, and then we will take the third session, just take a test. You take the time that you need to. Uh, those uh, that are off-site, Wilder, uh, other places, um, your tests are going to be brought back to us tomorrow, I think. And so uh, I'm going to close the door. And let's pray. Let's pray to begin. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for the opportunity to study your word, Father, in depth. Lord, we want to know more. Father, we want to be more effective in this Christian walk. We want to bring more honor and glory to you, Father. And so we just ask that. By the Holy Ghost, to open our hearts and minds tonight that we'll have clear understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, uh, page 29 in your notes, uh, big Roman numeral 2, the heavenly side and the earthly side of righteousness. First there under point A, our righteousness is a fact of heaven. Uh, there are, we, we're talking about faith. And there are a lot of times people get confused in faith. They think that... that we're, actually, what we're doing is we're, we're trying to hope that we generate it. There, there is an intense hope. There's an intense want to. Uh, faith, though, is already settled. Our, 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 it's, it's in us. Uh, we're feeding it with the Word of God. Uh, we're agreeing with facts of heaven is, is what I'm after. Our righteousness is a fact of heaven. This is something that God has done based on what Jesus did for us on the cross. Isaiah 53, 9, And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. In that scripture, uh, and it's important to understand everything that Jesus did on the cross. We're going to apply faith to all those things. Point one at the bottom. Death in this birth, verse is in the plural form in the original Hebrew. Uh, it could have been translated deaths. Now we know just at a basic level there are two kinds of death. There is spiritual death. Uh, which is separation from God, and there is physical death, which we understand physical death. So, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his deaths. Two types of death, physical death and spiritual death. Now, Jesus did suffer spiritual death, separation from God, when he became sin for us. You, you, we, we've quoted this already, the scripture says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, why would he say that? You know, it was not an accusation, uh, and it was not a paranoia. He recognized at that point that he was separated from God. Um, there it is. Uh, it, the scripture is listed there: Matthew fifteen thirty-four and Matthew uh, Mark fifteen thirty-four and Matthew twenty-seven forty-six. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, "Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani?" That is, "My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?" Here's the thing to understand. We're going to hit on this quite a bit tonight. Whatever the Lord did not cover for us, we're responsible for. So if He had not died a spiritual death, we have to die a spiritual death. Well, He did. Um, so, point two, Jesus suffered a spiritual death and He recognized it, saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus also suffered a physical death. Uh, and that is that the spirit is separated from the body. We know that they took his lifeless physical body and laid it in a tomb. Uh, 
Um, we are going to have power over that in that it will not be our end. But we are going to die physically. But we have victory over it. I say because it, uh, it's not the end for us. Um, you know, God's, you're, you're, God's going to get your spirit out of that body somehow. Um, and when He does, that body is going to cease to exist. This body does not go to heaven. We get a new body. Okay. I've always been curious about when, when you say um, the second coming that he comes, that the the dead their bodies shall rise or something like that first, and then it's us. What is that? Because I've always wondered, like, our bodies go to heaven. Because I've always heard your bodies don't go to heaven. I never understood that. Your bodies don't go to heaven. We get a recreated body. Mm -hmm. um, those that are dead will rise, and we who are yet alive will, will meet him in the air. Um, I don't know. I always have gotten the impression that some of those things we, we're not told. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is just opinion. It's a good question. Um, I've always been of the opinion uh, that if I'm still here and he comes back and I'm not died, I'm not laying in the grave, my body's not laying in the grave, um, that in a twinkling, mm -hmm. in, the instant of, in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, I'll be changed. Now mm -hmm. it does say that. We're changed. This body will put on an incorruptible body and I'll, and I'll rise to meet him in the air. It does say that. Um, the Bible does say that. If we are one in heaven, if we're in a, if we're in a grave, mm -hmm. then we're not laying in the grave because mm -hmm. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, when we die, we are instantly with the Lord. Mm -hmm. If He's coming back mm -hmm. on a white horse, mm -hmm. I'm coming with Him. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know when I get my new body. I don't know if if I if this old thing is resurrected and it's changed, mm -hmm. just like if when I was here and I and I rise and, and meet Him in the air and that mm -hmm. one's changed. Um, I don't know. We're not told. I just it, yeah. I just know that I'm going. Yeah. It's good to at least have a theory yeah. to what happens. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, but Jesus did suffer a physical death. So what body was resurrected? When they went in to the tomb, we studied that last week, I think, He was not there. And then Mary turned around and there He was. And I think, who asked about the nails? I did. Yeah, Joe asked, you know, was this a... Were, was, seen the wounds. You know, were there, were there wounds there? Well, if there were wounds there, then that was somehow the body that he'd had here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, but but he's got a victorious spirit on the inside because by then he's defeated the devil. He's going to go to heaven to offer up his blood before the throne of God. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I don't know. I just do know that there, that we do get a glorified body, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and that this one doesn't go. <laughs> so, glory. which is good because you know I used to have black hair. It was long. <laughs> it was curly. I uh, like my dad. I like to, <laughs> I like to thank you for making me feel old. I like to. I <laughs> like to <laughs> have that again. You know. So, um, so, Jesus suffered a spiritual death, separation from God, and Jesus suffered a a physical death. Okay. Um. Luke 23, 46, And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, He said, Father, into Your hands I commit My Spirit. Okay? That's very telling there. Into Your hands I commit My Spirit. I am, I'm going to leave this body. And said, uh, Having said this, He breathed His last. John 19, 30, when, he, when Jesus had received the sour wine, He said, It is finished. And bowing His head, He gave up His Spirit. Or there's some kind of sense that He gave up the ghost. You know, he's, His Spirit left His body. And so his body was dead. Uh, and his spirit, where did his spirit go? Well, we know that at that point, his spirit descended into hell. Mm -hmm. If he did not, we have to. It's this whole substitution thing that he's doing for us. You know, we need to identify with that. Um, did he deserve any of that? No, he didn't deserve any of that. That was a choice he made for us so that we don't have to. Point B there, Jesus was made, and it's what it is, Jesus was made to be sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For He made Him 
who mm -hmm. knew no sin, that's Jesus, to be sin for us. This is one of the causes for God, um, for Him being separated from God. God cannot look on sin. I'm going to put it that way. Um, so it says, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him, or through what He did. Um, he made him to be. He made him who knew no sin. Jesus did not have a sinful lineage through his father. We all have a sinful lineage through our father, mm -hmm. uh, through our fathers, um, mm -hmm. because of Adam's sin. That's passed down. Jesus' father was God, so there is no sinful lineage there. So he had to make him to be sin. Jesus, and this is what I've been talking about. Jesus chose to be our sin substitute. Okay, and here in this, the cross, the work on the cross, all that the all that the blood pays for and cleanses us from sin, and all those things, really is has to do with being a substitute. It's, yes. And you just got to yes. bear that in mind. Mm. Um, every claim of justice, point two, was met on the cross. Uh, in his deaths, physical and spiritual, Jesus was deity suffering for humanity. Um, Romans four twenty five, number point D there. Uh, who was delivered up because of our offenses. See, we're the ones that deserve to go mm -hmm. to the cross. We're the ones that deserve all the wrath of God poured out on us because of this, this sin that is in us. But Romans 4.25, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Um, I don't, I'm not sure when we're going to get this one. Let me just, let me just the, the reference probably we're familiar with in that regard is Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we hear that a lot. It's, it's, it's this substitution. Let me just go there and read it. I was thinking it was right there in the notes. It's, it's not. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely He has borne our griefs yes. and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. You know, God's wrath was poured out on Jesus on mm -hmm. the cross because of sin. It's mm -hmm. what sin deserved. Verse 5, but He was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. Jesus was wounded, stripes on His back, bruised, beaten, nails mm -hmm. in His hands and feet for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, and iniquity, general understanding is, we think, well, that means sin. It's, it's the one that iniquity is just not the sin. It's the tendency of mankind to be bent that way. Ooh, okay? Uh, so he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, and ch to chastise someone, to chastise a child, they're being punished. The chastisement of our peace, peace with God, not alienated from God, was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. So he took stripes, he took nails, he took the beating, uh, mm -hmm. he took the crown of thorns, he took the mockery, mm -hmm. uh, he was yeah. bruised. You know, when you hit someone, the tissue underneath the skin is bruised, but that's a spilling of blood. Mm -hmm. Okay? So all of that is as a substitute. Yes, sir? This was all prophecy, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it's in the Old Testament. Yeah. Yep. Hadn't happened yet. I say I saw it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's but that really is what we're we're making those points here. But that's the the best old uh, old reference to it, old Old Testament reference to it. Um, uh, Romans four twenty five point D there number one under that says we know he carried our sins because as the Son of God Jesus was not subject to death because he was sinless and he was sinless. Think about how death came. How did death come originally? Was it the of yeah, right. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, mm -hmm. and so death came. And so, if he is walking perfectly, without sin, is he subject to death? Now, I've never thought about that until I began to study for this course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is he? There's a lot of like moments yeah. <laughs> reading that book. Yeah, um, as so it says, as the Son of God, Jesus was not subject to death because he was sinless. Point B, it would have been impossible for him to die if he had not become sin for us. Let me give you a scripture for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, John 14, I think. 
30. I usually teach this from another point, but it's, it's hereafter, it's John 14, verse 30 says, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world, who is that? Yeah, Satan. Satan. That's Satan. the devil. The prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's it's good. a very telling con. Now, I, now, I use this as a to talk about what Jesus does from that point until he's on the cross. Mm -hmm. But really, just f at face value right there, it's saying the devil's coming. The devil who has death is coming, and he's got nothing in me. This he can't do it. Really good. What's it say there, Janet? It says he has no hold on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. The yeah. devil is coming and can't do anything to me. <laughs> so how, oh, is this, how is it the devil has hold on any of us? Only on the sin. Yeah. yeah. And so since he didn't have sin, you know, it just, we don't really think about this very much, but what really Jesus had done is Jesus was walking in a return to what we call an Edenic Eden, an mm -hmm. Edenic state. He's walking like Adam walked. See, Adam walked that way and blew it. Mm -hmm. And so the, that the cross works yeah. is that Jesus walked that way and didn't blow it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because then the sacrifice is no good. You know, what did the Israelites have to, what kind of sacrifice, see what you know this, did the Israelites have to bring? In the Old Testament, when they were going to do a sacrifice, what kind of a sacrifice did they have to yeah, do? Yeah, it was blood. Yeah, it was blood, but. Sin. Yeah. Uh, just... Could it be a three legged goat? Yeah, yeah. Pure, it has to be, it had, oh, to, it be had to be a pure. Young, pure goat. Had to be pure, yes. nothing wrong with it, no spot, no yeah. blemish. Yeah. Yeah. You know, couldn't be just any, couldn't, couldn't be a three legged goat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it had to be the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of sacrifice. That Jesus had to be. It had to be God, who He is, mm -hmm. living in the flesh. It had to be a perfect sacrifice. And so, if it's a perfect sacrifice, then you got to wonder: Well, what does the sin really produce? Jesus isn't going to die. He had mm -hmm. to lay down His life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's go on. These are some neat points. Point mm -hmm. two, there at the bottom of thirty, we know we are forgiven because. Jesus could not have been raised from the dead unless our sins were forgiven. That full price had to be paid. Okay? Full forgiveness. Um, he had our sins, so we were, were forgiven. Yeah. He had to take them all. You know, he couldn't take just some of them. Mm -hmm. um, because then what he'd done would not have been complete. If our sins were not forgiven, our sins would continue to separate Jesus from God. If Jesus took our sins, you know... And and it wasn't and it wasn't a complete work. Two things: we'd have been separated from God, and He would have been continued to be separated from God. So it was a complete work. First Peter three eighteen says that scripturally. The next page: For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just Him for the unjust us, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So when people say, oh, God's punishing me for something that I've done, they can't say that because there's no punished. punishment for sin. Yes. I mean, once you're, you know, That's right. accept. Yeah. You would say said, there's no punishment for sin now mm -hmm. because you've already been punished. And it really mm -hmm. wasn't you that was punished. It, it was, was him that punished for you. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, That's God, it. we've got this idea that God is now sitting up there in judgment you know, waiting to smack us down when we, when we mm -hmm. mess up. Uh, and they don't, people that say that don't understand big theological dispensations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're in the dispensation of the Gentile. And that is this age. A dispensation is a church age. Yes. And, and, the, and the earmark of our dispensation is that people are getting saved. It's mm -hmm. grace. That's right. Grace, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, so, so yeah, this whole idea of punishment, there's no punishment. Punishment's been done. Mm. Oh, let me just look real quick. I hear people say that all the time, and it just really annoys me. Now I have an argument. Well, they really stuff. punish themselves when they continue to do it. Yeah, exactly. Needlessly. Yeah. 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 Just letting the devil keep bringing down the condemnation. Mm -hmm. If they would just believe that they'd been forgiven, mm -hmm. you just have to have faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Isaiah 54. It's, um,. Let's 
Verse, verse 7, I'm going to read several here. For a small moment have I forsaken thee. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. For a small yeah. moment, see, as I say, he's still prophesying. This, we, we read 53 a minute ago, now we're into 54. He says, For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Yes. See, mercy is, we are guilty. All right? Mm -hmm. This, we think about, we're talking about the complete work at the cross. Uh, think, at it, think about it legally. We've been brought before the judge. We've been found guilty. Mm -hmm. We've been judged. But the sentence, you understand legally, there are two parts. I got to serve, I got to serve on, a, on a jury trial, on a trial, yeah, it was, it was jury trial, uh, several months ago, and there was a young girl that was accused of something, and we had two things we had to do as a jury. We had to figure out whether she was guilty or innocent, and then we had, as a jury, had to figure out what the sentence was. Mm -hmm. Two parts. And so, mm -hmm. based on the evidence, we found that she was guilty. But then we had all kinds of leeway to how she should be punished. Now, I'm just big softy. I won't let her go. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what God, God has found us guilty. We are guilty. Um, for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. So he's found us guilty. Judgment has been made, but we're sentenced to mercy. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. He decides to not, yeah, I'm just not going to pass sentence on you. I could destroy you. Instead, um, you know, the sentence is forgiveness. You are guilty, but because of mercy, you're forgiven. That's the, Hallelujah. Sentence. That's the sentence. Oh, glory See, there's a God. judgment and a sentence. And we think God just carries that judgment of guilty all the way through, you know, like you mm -hmm. said. You know. um, but this is what he's talking about, Isaiah 54. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Mercies. Mm -hmm. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because God turned away from it. Yes. Because he was our sin. He became our sin. Yes. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Hallelujah. So, there's more of that prophecy um, about how much Jesus became our sin and God punished him as mm -hmm. a substitute, but that lets mercy come on us now. See, the ju judgment has been done. Look, nobody, um, God didn't, didn't wink at uh, or overlook his own laws. Sin mm -hmm. required punishment. And so there was punishment. Mm -hmm. But the sentence part is mercy. He's, yes. he's allowed to do that. So God isn't, God isn't saying one thing and doing another. Yeah. Sin, you get punished. And so Jesus was. Now, he gets to have mercy because the price has been paid. Um, mm -mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what happened, I'm in point G at the top of page 31, Colossians 1.18, Jesus is called the firstborn from the dead. Acts 13.33, Today I have begotten you. Um, Jesus set the course that we follow. Uh, what happened to him? He was punished and, and God's Spirit made him alive. Um, mercy was poured out. He is the first one. That means there's some after him. Well, what's, who's the some after him? We are. Okay. The first separated one, because he was separated from God, is the first begotten one. Um, Psalm 138.2, God is, or right about that point two, God has bound himself to his word before all the inhabitants of heaven. Psalm 138.2, you have magnified your word above all your name. God was going to honor his word. Okay. And so he did honor his word. And then because His Word was honored, then because mercy is who He is, He's allowed to be Himself and be merciful. That's how we, that's how we get there. That's the heavenly side. The earthly side of righteousness, 
Um, point one, what Jesus purchased for us in heaven is now, is now ours to be enjoyed on the earth. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, this is Bible college, so I'm going to give you some, some theological $64,000 words. <laughs> um, you can impress all your friends with these. Under point one there, what Jesus purchased for us in heaven is now ours to be enjoyed on the earth. So there's a couple things to consider there. Heaven and earth. Heaven being a place, earth being a place. What Jesus did then and where we are now. Those concepts and the seeming conflict with them, because heaven is not here. I mean, if this is heaven, I'm a little disappointed. You know, uh, you know and I realized that was then and this is now. And I've got tomorrow to deal with. Paul talks a doctrine that we refer to as the already, not yet. That's a, yeah. that's a, that's good. I like that's, that's what it is. You know, what's, what has happened, what's going to happen, and how much of the what's going to happen can we draw back into the now? Mm -hmm. And so we have this terminology, the already, not yet. Um, the point two, the earthly side is the personal application of what is rightfully ours because of what Jesus did. So we're reaching in, in remember the first statement we had, let me go back there and just read it to you again. Uh, our righteousness is a fact of heaven. And so what we're doing is we're reaching into heaven and applying it on earth. Yes, yes. I think it was David said, Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is established in heaven. Amen. We, were, we were told to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why do we have to pray that? Well, evidently, there's some connecting process between what is in heaven now and what is available on earth now. Okay? And we refer to this as the already not yet. Uh, let me go on a little bit and see if I can just give you some information and put pieces together. Um, activating, point C. Activating, let me back up and read this again, above that, point two. The earthly side is the personal application of what is rightfully ours because of what Jesus did. When did you get saved? When you accepted Jesus? When you believed? Those are all correct. Yes. Any other answers that are also correct? When did you get saved? Before the... When you gave the before the beginning of time. Oh. Yes, the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. You could, that's also true. And you also got saved 2,000 years ago. That's yeah. what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is. It's, it's, a trick, it's, it's not really a trick question. It's just a question with a lot of right answers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because you, you're all right. Yeah. And so the earthly side is the personal application of what is rightfully ours because of what Jesus did. And when did He do it? He did it as Andrew said, from the beginning of time, he's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. But also, when did he go to the cross? He went to the cross about 2,000 years ago. Blood was spilled then. Has blood been spilled since then? No. It was spilled once for all. Now, Peter said, uh, 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also suffered once, top of that page there, once for sins. That's when he suffered, when he went to the cross. His blood was spilled. Okay. Um, and so the earthly side is the personal application of what is rightfully ours because of what Jesus did. So if He did it then, yeah. when does it become mine? It's already yours. Yes, and that's the already side yes. of the already not yet. Okay? Are there some things that are not yet? Well, I'm obviously not in heaven. Mm -hmm. So there's a not yet that has to do when this earthly body dies and I leave. That's a mm -hmm. not yet. Has Jesus come back on a white horse? No, that's a not yet. And so in what has been paid for, we have this sometimes perceived conflict, although if you're reading this with the Spirit of God and some understanding, there really is no conflict. But we have this, yes. well, that's already ours, but that's not yet ours. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about that, that already not yet. So let's go on a little bit. Point C, yes. activating what is rightfully ours. Point one, in order to receive the full blessings that are rightfully ours, we need to activate what's been done by faith. Okay? Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. 
faith begins where the Word of God is known. Without mm -hmm. faith, it's impossible to please God. That means without mm -hmm. knowing His Word, he's, you can't please Him. He, mm -hmm. he, Isaiah 1, 18, come let us reason together. What does He reason? He reasons His Word. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 1 says He watches over His Word to, to hasten it. to perform it. Mm -hmm. That means to perform it in a hurry. And so, and so God is doing this faith thing. If you look back up there above point B, Psalm 138.2, you have magnified your word above all your name. Even above who He is, He, he holds His word higher. That God, God did that. He didn't ask me what I thought about that. Just a decision He made. <laughs> okay, so how, and so how do we you, activate now what is rightfully ours? The process of the currency of the kingdom of heaven, faith. We do it. We do it not. We do it by faith, but we do it with faith. Remember, faith has an action, and faith speaks. Okay. So point A under C one A. This is equivalent to enforcing a law that is on the books. You know, you think of, we're go, we're coming into a political time. And they're telling us all what they're going to do when they get into Washington. Now, all these new laws they're going to do, all that they're going to that they're going to write, and how they're going to help us. What a bunch of hooey! Mm -hmm. <laughs> we already got the laws. My question is, how about enforcing some of the laws that we have? Mm -hmm. We really don't need you up there writing more laws. I don't care whether you're Democrat or Republican, and really God's neither. Uh, mm -hmm. You know. How about enforcing the laws that are already on the books? And so that's maybe that gives you a little understanding. That's what we're doing now. We've already got these laws. We enforce them. We enforce what's already on the books. How do we do that? With our faith. Um, though it, point B, though it was the law all along, it is only operative once it is enforced. It's there. You know, the Bible says we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When? Now. Well, when I've got the flu. Yeah, well, you must not, you must not understand that you're in heavenly places because I don't think there's, ever, there's any flu at the throne. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are we doing? We're not operating in faith. Mm -hmm. And it's faith, again, this already not yet, it's faith that allows us to reach into the future and into heaven dispensationally and drag that stuff back into where we are now and have it manifest. That's the already not yet. Um, point two, three steps to activating what's rightfully ours. Step one, deliverance and translation at the new birth. Colossians 1, 13 to 14, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have and you could say, have now, because that's what that mm -hmm. verb means. Mm -hmm. Have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. And so if we are forgiven, that means mercy is poured out. There's no more mercy going to be poured out you when you get to heaven than what you have right now. You're not going to be any more saved when you get to heaven than what you are right now. Okay, everything has been done. The price is paid in full. It's just a matter of us stepping into it. How do we step into it? We hear the Word. Mm -hmm. We believe it. Mm -hmm. It becomes faith. We act on it. We speak it. Um, who hath delivered, past tense, us from the power of darkness, the, the devil's power, and hath translated us, past tense, mm -hmm. into the kingdom of his dear son. Where do you live now? I live in the kingdom of, of, of Jesus. I live in the kingdom of the Son of God. Now. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Mm. Do you, we, we can do the word study like before. Delivered. Uh, you know how we did this with the Strong's. It's in Greek because it's New Testament. Uh, Ramai. Mm -hmm. To rescue, to deliver. Uh, translated. Well, these are some good Greek words. Methistami. Mm -hmm. uh, to transpose, transfer, remove from one place to yes, another. Sir. And so I have been removed from the kingdom of the devil because in sin, I was in his kingdom. I was bound by mm -hmm. his kingdom. And... and he was in control. It's His kingdom. But when I got born again, when I accepted what Jesus did at the cross, that sacrifice, at that time, I was translated out of that kingdom into the kingdom of God. 
I am, I am in the kingdom of God now. When I go to heaven, I'm not going to be any more in the kingdom of God than I'm in the kingdom of God now. My address is going to change. Mm -hmm. Amen. But, but me being a citizen of the kingdom, another way to look at it is you know what an ambassador is. Mm -hmm. An ambassador goes to another country. Um, an ambassador, I've been to Kenya, so we'll use that as an example. Uh, the ambassador to Kenya does not function and is not subject to Kenyan law. Mm -hmm. Because he, he or she is a citizen of the United States. Amen. So, quite honestly, if they get over there and just really mess up, what do we do with them? We just bring them home. Yes. Okay. Lord. Lord. But, good. but, yeah, we don't want to go home early. But the, because uh, uh, we want to do our job as ambassadors. But we, as ambassadors, we operate under the, the laws of the kingdom of heaven. I don't have to operate under the laws of the kingdom of the devil. I've been translated out of his kingdom. I don't live there anymore. And that's, that's really what we are. That's what's available to us. Uh, point two, this is what is activated for every Christian at the new birth. Now, how is it enforced? All right, well, we've used this old example for a long, long time. Henry, I could put $100,000 in the bank out at First Farmers, uh, but if you never went out there and drew it out, mm -hmm. even though you have it, you would never have the benefit of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, I, I didn't do that. I, I didn't do that. I, I love you, but I didn't oh. put hundred thousand dollars out there. But Man. you know, that's so you know, so so you it's have it excited. but it is your responsibility <laughs> to enforce it. And you're yeah. gonna so you're gonna enforce it by faith. Mm -hmm. Uh speaking faith, walking out faith. Um Ephesians one three, uh, point A there under two, blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us, past tense, yes. with every spiritual blessing Saints. in the heavenly places in Christ. So when do we have it? Well, if it's a past yes. tense blessing, I have it now. Yes. Okay, so this is this already not yet thing. Ephesians 2, 6, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Made, past tense. Raised, past tense. Okay, it's all about our access. Step two, point B there in the middle of the page, progressive illumination. A progressive divine illumination of our right standing with God. Let me read this, Romans, 6, Romans 1, 16, 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The reason that you're living by faith is you are an ambassador from God's kingdom in the kingdom of the devil. The devil is the little g God of this world. This is yeah. where we're living. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we get translated out of that and get, are given ambassador status. This will just almost preach. Um, <laughs> That's good. Glory. Glory. There's a I'm looking at actually 2 Corinthians 5. I believe that this one doesn't do it. There's a, tra there's a translation that uh, uses the word ambassador. Which one? Which 2 verse? Corinthians 5. I'm in, and it's, I just know it's in this area. Um, oh, yeah. 18. 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. That separation of sin is no longer there because of Jesus Christ. And hath given to us oh, the ministry. Does it say ambassador in no, yours? You are therefore Christ's ambassadors as. Yeah, it is there. It's there. It's this one too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it has yeah. given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. What where Janet was, verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors yeah. for Christ. It even calls us that. Okay? So we've been translated out of the devil's kingdom, given ambassador status in God's kingdom, but quite honestly, been sent right back into the earth. Mm -hmm. Because where do you need an ambassador? Mm -hmm. In that other kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's, and that's really how this works. Um, Glory to God. Let's continue that process. Step three down there, let us see progressive transformation. We are transformed. Now how are we going to do this? We are transformed as our minds are renewed. 
There really is a how-to. We can understand how that we do this. When you're transforming your mind, Romans 12, 2, and I can read that because we've done it a bunch. We know what it says. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When we transform our minds, how, how is it that we're doing that? How do you transform your mind? Hmm. What is the process? Huh? Reading of the Word. Reading of the Word. Yeah, yeah, because see, it's in it's in your mind. You're yeah. washing your mind. All right, so we are transformed as our minds are renewed. Now I'm willing to say that. You might say it another way. We realize we're transformed, but we realize we've been translated one kingdom to another as our minds are renewed. We can be translated from. I'm I'm, I'm playing on words here. Not not transformed. Translated. We can be translated and not know we're translated. You know, like I say, the ambassador can can succumb to the, the laws of that other nation if he wants to. You know, you got to renew your mind. You got to know what the law is. You got to know where you stand. You got to know who you are. So how do we do that? We transform our minds. We renew our minds. Um, point two there. As we look in the mirror and see yes. the glory of the Lord, we become increasingly like Jesus. Uh, in fact, the next month is Christ-like character. That's what we're going to study. We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Okay? You're looking in a mirror. Uh, the, the Bible is a mirror. The more you look into it, what's the Bible doing? The Bible is telling me who I am. Okay? And as I look into it, I'm seeing who I am just like I'm in a mirror. Now, if I go away from a mirror, I forget what I look like. I think my hair is still black. And long and flowing. <laughs> yeah. But then I look back in the mirror and realize it's not that way at all. But when I go away from the mirror, I forget those things. Well, same thing here. Don't laugh so hard. Um, when I look in this mirror, it tells me who I am. When I put it down and don't read it until next Sunday, I've forgotten who I am. Mm -hmm. And so I've been this ambassador that does not know I'm an ambassador that does not know how to act, that does not realize I'm not subject to the laws of that land. I'm subject to the laws of the land where I came from, which is heaven. Okay? But I'm not looking in the mirror reminding myself of that every day. I forget it, and I just will be untransformed. So you have to continually renew your yeah. mind. You have to continually renew your mind. Um, Glory. Being changed. This is what it's saying. 2 Corinthians 3.18, we are being transformed into the same image, look at this phrase, from glory to glory. So each time I look in there, I'm being transformed. Yes. More glory, more glory, more glory, more glory, more glory. And that's how from glory to glory I'm being transformed. Now here's the thing. The world's mirror will do the same thing. Mm. Oh yeah. That's true. That's true. And so we and so we get a roller coaster ride a lot of times as Christians. Yes, sir. Because we believe what the world says. I hate news people. I'm just going to say it. I'm just, you know, you, God will have to forgive me. I'll just repent tonight later. I just hate them. What gives them the right to prophesy uh, what's going to happen? They don't, they, none of them know. It's just, it's just gossip. It's just what they think. And quite honestly, probably most of us are more educated than any of them. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're going to make an educated guess, we probably could do better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what gives what gives them the right? Listen, uh -huh. what gives them the right to speak the image they have? Because mm -hmm. faith will work. The Bible says to every man and woman is given the measure of faith. What mm -hmm. do you put in it? What do you give it to speak? Mm -hmm. It will do. You can be your own prophet of doom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get what you say. What are you going to feed it? And so the mirror mm -hmm. is the word for us. But make no mistake, that mirror process works no matter what you're looking at. And you'll, and you'll believe it and you'll act it out because faith will be activated towards what you feed it, mm -hmm. towards what you're looking at. Um, cool. So the world's mirror will do the same thing but in the negative. And quite honestly, you don't hear it much anymore. But we used to teach this faith stuff years and years ago. Kind of backed off from it. No good reason. We used to talk about something called negative faith. Mm -hmm. And negative faith was simply your faith applied to the lies of the enemy. Uh, to the, the lies that the devil says. And you know what? It works. Faith mm -hmm. works. 
You just, it's up to you to guide it. Uh, Ephesians 4, 23, 24, more of the same. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So how are we doing that again? We're putting the word in. We're putting the word in. We're putting the word in. And then once it's meditated in here, what happens is there's a connection and it drops 18 <coughs> inches. I actually took a ruler one day and measured it. It's about, <laughs> it's about 18 yeah. inches. It really is. Um, and, and that yeah, I've heard people say that. I thought, well, I don't know if that's 18 inches or not. Let's just check. And so I got a ruler out. Probably looked pretty silly standing there in the kitchen. You pulled it. Good. So Ephesians 4, 23 and 24, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God. So you even have a choice of doing that. It's like we said with the bank account thing, Henry. You know, mm -hmm. it, it can be there, but if you don't choose to activate it, to go take advantage of it, you know, it really doesn't matter. almost doesn't matter that it's there. Mm -hmm. um, in true righteousness and holiness. Uh, B, next page, our new man is created according to God making us like God. That should, you should not be afraid to say that. That should not bother you. Uh, I have two sons. They look like me. Uh, and they act like me too. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's not such a good thing. But I really do say, yeah, well, why'd you do that? Well, I know exactly why you do that because you're mine. Um, you know. And so we are gods. We, we belong to Him. We, uh, we are apostrophe as gods. Uh, we're His children. Yeah. He, the Bible says he's begotten us. Yes. Uh, Jesus is the first begotten. He's our brother. Guess what? We probably look like there's probably a family resemblance. Mm -hmm. Probably look like our brother. Probably act like our brother. Uh, and here again, mm -hmm. next month is Christ-like character. That's what we're focused on anyway. Second Corinthians five twenty-one. We are made the righteousness of God. So that righteous element that is God, we're made that. We look like Him in that. We're made the righteousness of God in Him. Um, now he talks about some results here. I'll just go into it a little bit. Uh, faith is restored. Uh, Romans ten seventeen. I will tell you something. Yes, positive faith is restored, but faith never left. That mm -hmm. every to every man, every man, and I believe every man doesn't mean every Christian. I mean it means every man, woman, child. You know, when you're born into this world, you've got this measure of faith. Mm -hmm. What do you do with it? It says, it says we have it. Um, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so you've got you to get that faith hearing. Uh, it's a hearing element. Um, our prayers avail much. The earnest, this is good to be amplified. The mm -hmm. earnest, heartfelt, I, continuous I prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Why? Because it's Word generated. If it's not word generated, it ain't even worth praying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm not talking about always being positive. David mm -hmm. said, "I pour out my complaint to you, God." <laughs> I will. I'll tell you something. I, I was. I will just confess. Uh, I'm not ashamed of it. I was complaining to God last night. Mm -hmm. I was complaining. Mm -hmm. But here's my point. That's my complaint to Him, not because I'm anything, but um, my complaint to Him was God, your word says this, and I don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. So what was my prayer? My prayer was based in what his word says. And so my complaint to him was, we got a problem. Mm -hmm. I know you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. We obviously know who's wrong. Yeah. You know, but I do see what your word says is not happening, so I'd like to know why it's not happening. Mm -hmm. And this morning you told me. Mm -hmm. You know, I went I, I was just just I was really way out of sorts last night and and let him know so. And this morning, you know, when I had settled down a little bit, uh, mm. he began to tell me, well, here's the problem, Frank. Um, so, if your prayer is communication with God, and if your prayer is word-generating faith, he that comes to God must believe that he is. How do you believe that he is? You hear his word. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so I'm going to tell you, faith will generate prayer. You know, if you believe in God, that if faith speaks, faith has an action, you'll begin praying. You may not, you may, you know, you may not pass theology courses based on how you pray, but you'll be praying. Yeah. You know, you'll have the word on the inside of you and it'll speak. Mm -hmm. It's like it wants to go home, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna find that way and it's gonna it's gonna make the connection for you. Um, some other things are the results of deliverance and translation, illumination, and transforma transformation. Peace with God is restored. Romans 5 1. Wonderful. See, we were separated because of sin. All right? 
we're restored, therefore having been justified mm -hmm. by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm at peace. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about God not answering my prayers. I don't have to worry about God punishing me. We talked about that. That's not even the dispensation mm -hmm. of now, you know. Um, peace is restored. Part D, we have dominion um, because of uh, uh, um, this transformation and translation out of one kingdom into another. Yes. Uh, we receive a new nature. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Yes. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I, there was a favorite preacher that I had. I actually worked with him some. Uh, and I would, I would tell him, Pastor so-and-so, you know, I don't do that anymore. I'm a new creature. And it'd make him mad. Mm -hmm. Because he knew some things I didn't know. But I was, I was just boldly standing by faith in what I knew. What I didn't realize is that there was some mind renewing that I still needed to do. Mm -hmm. He says, no, you're not really a new creature. I said, yes, I am a new creature. Now, I may not be a renewed creature. Mm -hmm. I may still have to work on that. But I am a new creature. All things have become new. Thank you. Lord. Anything old, anything of the old nature is gone. This gets back to what we were talking about a few weeks ago. What happens when your spirit gets saved? What happens when your spirit gets saved? What happens when your soul gets saved? Okay? And we're talking about, you know, can you sin? If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. 1 John 1, 9. But later on in 1 John it says, you know, if, if, you, if you're born of God, you can't sin. So how is it that you can't sin, but if you sin, you need to ask forgiveness of sin? This can't sin. Spirit. Mm -hmm. Spirit. This can. Mm -hmm. and, and this can. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, that's all this wants to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it is sin. Um, yeah. So, I am a new creature, though. Um, but you have to enforce it. And you enforce it by, by faith. Go down to point F there at the bottom of the page. Our identification is now with Jesus. Love has been, First John four seventeen. love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is... Yes. So are we in this world. Now that's present tense Hallelujah. verb usage. So this is the already not yet. The Bible tells me that as He is, so am I in this world. How does that happen? The Bible says that. I believe it. It's faith on the inside of me. It speaks. It has, it has uh, manifestation. And we will take a break for about 10 minutes. Okay, here we are, page 34, um, section 4 in your notes, page 34. The top it says, an understanding of suffering. And can we have just a collective, uh, <laughs> in, in the room as we talk about this. Um, when, and, and he has a statement there, when studying faith, a question often arises concerning suffering and whether faith can overcome suffering. And of course, when we think about suffering, I'm telling you, this is a, you get every, you get every opinion, uh, under the sun available from different Christians. Mm -hmm. Some people think if you're not suffering, you're really not serving God. Uh, so I, I've known people that, that they have what we actually term a martyr complex. Mm -hmm. That they just think everybody, you know, uh, has to suffer. And, and they want to tell you about all the suffering they're doing. But I really like the way Dr. Wingate has separated this. And I'm just going to even put my two cents in there too. And under point Roman numeral one, there's a word that I think you just ought to underline just so, you just so there's no way you can absolutely miss it, even though it's all in bold print. Why Christians suffer needlessly. Mm -hmm. Needless. Needlessly. Yeah. There's a lot of suffering. Oh, why did so and so die? Why did that person <coughs> have cancer? Why did this, you know? They're such a good person. <coughs> well, being a good person doesn't, doesn't do anything where the devil is concerned. Yeah. You know, the devil is afraid of the Word of God. Uh, you speak the Word to him. You speak, the devil is afraid of faith coming out of you. Faith-filled words. Um, so why Christians suffer needlessly? And I think that as we go through these, you've been talking about these light bulb moments, you know, stuff. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you're going to see some. Reason one, no knowledge of the truth of the Word. Mm -hmm. The devil does not play fair. He fights dirty. Mm -hmm. He fights only dirty. Mm -hmm. He fights dirty all the time. If you don't know something, 
that's where he exploits you. That's how, that's how he works. So reason number one, no knowledge of the truth of the word. Ignorance. Just mm -hmm. ignorant of, not stupid. Yeah. We can't do anything about stupid. This is ignorance of the word. <laughs> well, Hosea 4, 6. Um, my people are, what's it say there? Destroyed. Destroyed. The thief mm -hmm. comes, John 10, 10. John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Real plain. This is just real plain. How we how we miss this? But I know folks who they who you would say, oh, they're good Christians. They're wonderful people, and they just, you know, it's like, hello, read Hosea one time. Hosea four six. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The devil will take what you don't know and beat you over the head with it. He he will. 1 Timothy 2.4 God desires all men to be saved and to do what? To come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because where there is no knowledge, the people perish. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And it is God's goal. God desires all to be saved and mm -hmm. all to come to the knowledge of the truth. It is not God's desire that you don't know. And if destruction comes because we don't know, and John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, then we know God is not behind that kind of suffering. Okay? God, yeah, God's not behind that. We're told who's behind that. Second Peter uh, 1, verse 2 and 3, Grace and peace come through knowledge. All things that pertain to life and godliness come through knowledge. What are some of the things that pertain to life and godliness? Peace, health, happiness, prosperity, power, understanding, wisdom. Those things all come through knowledge. Not general knowledge. Knowledge of this. Okay? Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 34, Awake to righteousness and do not sin through knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you're sinning, it means there's something you don't know. And what's the result of sin? The death. Mm -hmm. You know, sin will bring sickness and then sickness will bring death. That's the logical progression of sin. Now there's some good here and, for, and some else that we don't want to overlook. 1 Corinthians 15, 34, Awake to righteousness and do not sin. Thank you, Lord. Overcoming Ooh, sin is possible. We don't have to live in sin. Our flesh does not get to dominate. The carnal nature, uh, the flesh which we were talking about earlier, you know, that does not go to heaven, that does not necessarily get to win. We can beat that thing. Yeah. Proverbs 11, 9, through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. Well, what do you get delivered from? Do I need delivered from peace? Do I need delivered from health? Do I need delivered from financial blessing? No, I need delivered from the kingdom of God. But what, what's already happened? God's translated me out of the kingdom of God, out of the kingdom of darkness into his into the kingdom of his son. Yeah. What have I been saying about the kingdom of God? Through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered from the kingdom of the devil. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. How do we do that? Knowing that it's possible. How do I know it's possible? Read the word. In that last discourse, if I said kingdom of God and kingdom of devil, I got them mixed up. You all just straighten them out. <laughs> Reason two. Okay. So we beat that pretty good. Reason two. Not acting on the word they know. Now I will tell you, I see a lot of Christians do this. You, you know the Word, but you don't let it become an action or words in your life. Huge area where we, where we suffer needlessly. Uh, Matthew 7.24 Hear these sayings and do them. This is a story of the house built on the rock or the house built on the sand. Yeah. Um, and I can read you that really quick. That's, a, that's an easy one to, to uh, quote there. Matthew 7. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house on a rock. Okay? 
and everyone that hears these things of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Okay, that's just Matthew 7, 24 through about 26. Just spells it out real, real clearly. Um, hear these things and do them. There's a lot that we know. Now, why don't we do? Yeah. That's what a lot yeah. of people like to say. I mean, that's, that's the reason I like to say a lot. You know, I'm just too lazy mm -hmm. to walk yeah. out. I just don't want to do Or afraid. Yeah. Let me, let me see if I can find real quick the parable. Yep. yep. Um, parable of the sower. And verse 14, And these are they which are sown among thorns. I'm in Mark 4.18. These are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and they, they, hear, they hear the word. Okay, so it's not point one. It's not reason one. No knowledge of it. They know it. Yes. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, yes. and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, mm. and it becomes unfruitful. I have been so busy. I have been so driven. It's 10.30 at night. I'm so tired. I know that I should read the Word and renew my mind, but I go to bed. Things, other things, entering in all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a and constant temptation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's and th and it's a, it's, a, it's a thing that we face more and more mm -hmm. in this society. Um, and so these this person in this parable knew the word but all these other things all these other things entering in taking their time distracting them saying no I'm more, more important than that caused them not to do the word and so because then they didn't do the word then they suffer um, James 1 but be doers of the word this was the memory verse from my youth group when I was a youth pastor many many years ago We'd, this is the first thing we'd say when we come into into a meeting. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. That's scary. Mm -hmm. If you'll just and what it really means is, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If you <coughs> will hear the word, and not do it, the deceiver doesn't even have to mess with you. You'll do mm -hmm. his job for him. Mm -hmm what that says mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're self deceived you, well you know don't need to worry about thus and such person you know they we don't need to bother with them they're already deceived they're already in lack they're already stupid they're already you know, you know just leave them alone we'll go work on somebody that you know takes some work let's let that person just just you know deceive themselves they're doing our job for us and that's really what this and so what happens then if you're deceived what's the devil going to do with somebody that's deceived He's going to rob from them. He's going to lead them down a path of death and destruction and misery. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing? Suffering, point one there, Roman number, needlessly mm -hmm. because we're hearing the Word and not doing it. Mm -hmm. um, Hosea 4, 6. No, I'm sorry. Let me, I'm ahead of myself. C. I mean, I'm getting excited. I want to get ahead. Reason three. Opposition or open rebellion to the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is, I'm going to give you this scripture. We're going to go here just a second because he's using it in a way that I, that's good. It's not usually the way I use it, but I want to, I want to go there. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to tell you, if you have lost friends, lost family members, this is the prayer. This is a wonderful prayer that you can pray for them. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. It says, And the servant of the Lord, and that's talking about you, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Now, how do you oppose yourself? Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You bring destruction to yourself. That's what opposing yourself is. Um, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God That's peradventure good. will give them repentance mm. to the acknowledging of the truth. I, this good. is really a, a rabbit trail in another direction, but I firmly believe that nobody gets saved unless somebody prays for them. 
what do you pray? God, give them repentance. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's a wonderful prayer. If they to the acknowledging of the truth, so they're going to repent because they hear the truth and acknowledge it mm -hmm. in this next part, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Mm -hmm. What James one twenty two tell us? But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If they, if God if God will give them repentance, oh, give them repentance, and they'll acknowledge the truth, they can recover themselves. Mm -hmm. We need to ask. We need to ask. These are people who are opposing themselves. They're in open rebellion. Hosea 4 6, it says they were destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you study that out, they lacked knowledge because they had rejected it. They rejected it. And we probably all went through a time where we rejected knowledge. I remember a lot of times I'd walking up and down the streets going in and out of bars and and some Christian would walk up and hand me a, a tract or something and I'd mm -hmm. I just throw it in the street. You know, I don't want that. Well, I was rejecting it. And so what was happening then? Then I'd go into a place and, and proceed to destroy myself. You know, that's what, that's what happens. Uh, I was suffering needlessly. I, even as a lost person then, I didn't need to be suffering. Didn't have to suffer. But the flesh is self-destructive. Uh, and left to itself, it will, it will be an open rebellion to the truth. Now, see, reason four, part D, is similar to this, rebellion against authority. Mm. Let me help you with this. Everybody suffers with this. Boss gets in your face. You pray, God, just give me about 30 seconds. Yeah. Of flesh. <laughs> yeah. Turn yeah, your back, turn then your back for just 30 seconds. Yeah. No. Let, let, I'm going to help you today. I'm going to make you the best employees mm -hmm. in your company for the rest of your life. Let me, let me really help you with this. Because this is how you deal with, with bosses that are not wonderful. <laughs> Sorry, I was going there for a minute. <laughs> Romans 13. Mm -hmm. Let every soul be yes, subject unto the higher powers. If it's your boss, if it's the owner of the company, mm -hmm. if it's just your, if it's just the guy who's just the supervisor right above you, if it's the mayor, if it's the policeman, if it's the governor, if it's the president who you really would rather not be president again, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, all of them. What's it saying? <laughs> Let every soul be subject under the higher power. <laughs> well, God, what if they're ungodly? That why should I be subject to that? That's a good question. Let's answer it. For there is no power but of God. Now that doesn't mean that God Ooh. put wait 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 wait. That oh, doesn't mean God put Hitler in office. Yeah. Okay. Here, let me read on. I'm gonna tell you what that means. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. Now watch this. I just got that. And they and and they sh That's that cool. resist shall receive to themselves damnation. And you can go on and study out the rest of those few verses right there, but really what happens is, what God's talking about resisting is a structure of authority. Mm. Not the idiot. Okay? <laughs> the idea that, I mean, and let me read it again, Who, verse 2, whosoever therefore resists the power resists the ordinance of God. The ordinance of God is that there is a structure of authority. And when you resist that structure, mm -hmm. you're resisting God. Wow. And when you resist God, nobody, if I'd say, well, I'll tell you what, Janet, tomorrow we're going to go out and resist God. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be back to any of my classes. Yeah. Because that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> when it's that plain. But we're thinking, you know, well, that's an ungodly president, or that's an ungodly dictator, mm -hmm. or that's an ungodly policeman, or that's, you know, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Or my boss is a drunk, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. But they are in a position of authority. And when you resist authority, you are rebellious. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says rebellion is, is the sin of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And so here's the problem. And they that resist, end of verse 2, shall receive to themselves damnation. 
You are supposed to obey the laws of the land as long as it is good. That's what I say all yeah. the time to people. They're like, yeah. well, that goes against God, so I shouldn't do it. And I said, you need to obey, you know, well, people try to be like, well, you know, I don't really have to because I'm under God's authority. Yeah, but God's authority says to right. obey the law of the right. land. Right. So right. you're just, you know. And I'll tell you what happens. I've, I've gotten recently to practice this. Um, because I'm in a position that has tremendous authority and then I have some folks in authority over me. And I am of the personal conviction, conviction that a lot of times the people in authority over me are not always right. Mm -hmm. And so what do I do? I do everything I can to be obedient to what they say. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, Notice mm -hmm. I said everything I can. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to. I'm not. If it crosses up with the word, there's yeah. a problem. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a fight yeah. on their hands. But you know what? <laughs> That's a convenient excuse that we use a lot. Yeah. That just like you know, 99.9% .9 of the time never happens. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, mm -hmm. I've not had anybody hold a gun to my head say, you know, deny the Lord yeah. on mm -hmm. my job. Okay. But what happens when I? And the other thing to do is to pray for them because the Bible yeah. tells us that in Second Timothy. Second Timothy, I think. Uh, when I do that, then that is what allows God to move and change that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. See if, but if I'm resisting them, then I'm instantly in rebellion, and God has no avenue in. God can't do anything. It's like Frank, mm -hmm. you shut the door. I can't help you. Mm -hmm. You've blocked me out. If you'll just be obedient, if you'll just be humble, mm -hmm. then I can move there. That's awesome. It talks about that um, with marriage too. Yeah, same thing. My oh, husband's yeah, my, my husband's an idiot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, submit to him. Oh. And when you do that, it opens the door for God to go in. And I'll tell you something. In marriage, God only needs one door open. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. If one of the partners will open the door, somebody has to do it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the problem is though. When we're when we're not respecting when we're rebelling against authority, mm -hmm. we are rebelling against God. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, what's going to happen? We're going to suffer needlessly. Uh, Proverbs is another good book to study in this regard. It really, mm -hmm. really is. Reason five: living in sin. Mm -hmm. It's so easy, based on what we see in magazines, watch on television hear from the general public to just live in sin. Mm -hmm. They have totally cast off any sense of godliness in their behavior and think it's normal. Mm. It's normal to not have morals these days. Yeah, yeah. Whether godly or not, just morals in general. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're like the loser for waiting for marriage or something like that. Uh, well, and that's a, and that's a good point. I've I've been watching kind of a, a saga. Um, it's real life of some television personalities that are local here. They've been talking about you know, uh, oh, we got a wedding coming up. We got a wedding coming up. You know, my fiance this, my fiance that. You know, and and they're living together, mm -hmm. and they're acting like mm. there's not a thing wrong with that. And I'm thinking, you know what? That's sin. Have you yeah. no idea what you that's, opened up? Yeah, that, that. yeah, that's you have you have asked to be destroyed. Yeah. But you know what? They sin. have no conscience consciousness of that. Sin. And that's and that's what we're talking about. People that are living in sin. Uh, mm. Proverbs thirteen fifteen. The way of the transgressor is hard. Yeah. Well, wonder why. <laughs> you know, you're, you're opening the door to the devil to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a lady in my class. I was, I was teaching a class down at uh, Community College in Louisville, and, and um, this lady came in, and, and she really became one of my favorite students because she just, it was, everything was very difficult for her, but boy, she worked hard, and I just love the student that works hard. And, and one day, she, she pulled a picture out of her billfold, and she said, she said, Professor Rapper, this is me. And she held the picture up, and I could not recognize her. I was looking at a meth addict. Mm -hmm. She was like 40 pounds lighter, and she wasn't a big girl to begin with. Yeah. She was like 40 pounds lighter in this picture, had had all kinds of scars and blemishes and open wounds on her face. Her lips were all messed up. Uh, her eyes were just wild. Her hair didn't have all of it. Mm -hmm. And the girl that had been in my class was really a beautiful woman. Mm 
about 35 years old. The picture of this woman looked like she was 60 and been drugged behind a truck for half a mile. The way of the transgressor yes, is hard. Galatians 5, 19, 21. There's a long list of sins. You know these. Uh, do these and you won't receive your full inheritance. Mm -hmm. But you look at some of those things and you realize, uh, no wonder. Galatians 6, 7, and 9. Sowing to the flesh results in corruption. James 5, 14, and 15. Anoint the sick with oil. Their bodies will be healed and their mm -hmm. sins will be forgiven. So what yes. was happening because of sin? They were sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. That was really interesting in the book where they were saying how um, in order for you to pray healing over somebody, they have to be forgiven of their sins to be able to receive the healing. You got I never really thought about it. Yeah, you got to recognize what it is you're dealing with. Sometimes yeah. it's a sin. Yeah. Remember, Jesus would, a couple of occasions Jesus said, go and sin no more, mm -hmm. lest a worse thing come on you. Mm -hmm. um, another, another, another thing that I've heard is that there can be a spirit, I know this, can be a spirit of infirmity. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't heal a devil. Well, you have to cast it out. Yeah. Well, because like unsaved friends and family members, you know, asking for prayer of healing for a sickness, you know, then it makes you, you know, turns you out. Okay, actually, I need to pray for their salvation if they want prayer or if they mm -hmm. want to be receive healing. If there's no so, faith, then yeah, it's kind of pointless it. to pray for their healing yeah. or their sickness. Cause there's they can't a come. there's a connection, and there are a lot of times Kenneth Hagen, we know, would do this. He'd go in and he'd have a, a tent meeting. He wouldn't pray for the sick yeah. until he could teach them a while, because yeah. they had to have yeah. faith, yeah. you know, to activate in that. Yeah. yeah, and so and so as a minister, you need to recognize, okay, what have I got going on here? Yeah. Is this the result of sin, mm -hmm. or is it a virus, mm -hmm. or is it an evil spirit? Yeah. You know, and and there are different methods. And so what do we need, well, we need to be hearing God. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to understand. Uh, we need to have our minds renewed. Our senses exercise, as a phrase in the Bible said, our senses exercise to discern both good and evil. Our, our senses exercise by reason of use. Mm -hmm. So we're in this all the time, renewed all the time, renewed all the time, talking this, mm -hmm. hearing it, working in it. Oh yeah, that is a devil. I recognize it. Mm -hmm. you, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Um, reason yeah. six: not discerning the body of Christ. Now, a lot of times we associate this idea with communion, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but this is sin against the church, which is Christ's body on the earth. When we don't yeah. respect each other, mm -hmm. we're not recognizing the body of Christ. And as a result, sickness will come. Faith mm -hmm. works through love. Yeah. Reason seven, unforgiveness. You know the story of the guy that you know had, had uh, was owed the, owed the great debt. And he came before his master and said, oh, forgive me. And he just forgave him. Then that guy went out and find somebody who owed him like, you know, a dollar mm -hmm. and, sa and put him in jail mm -hmm. until he was paid. What's that unforgiveness? And of course, the result of it was that he was, that he was, um, he was hacked in pieces or whipped in. I mean, it was, you know, um, forgive. Mark eleven twenty five. Let's read that. Mark, Mark 11. So unforgiveness can cause needless suffering. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, mm -hmm. that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. What do you need forgiven for? Trespasses, sins. What does sin do? It separates you from God. Mm -hmm. You got a healing issue, but you're separated from God because of sin. Mm -hmm. And it's the sin of unforgiveness. Forgive. So when I was reading that last night, I kind of thought of like the whole saying, treat others how you wish to be treated. There's so many little sayings and things that we have today that people just throw around and stuff, but they don't realize like so many things just came from the Bible, but they don't realize they're speaking the Bible every day, but they are. Yeah, and, but you know, that's, the, that's one of the nice things about it. Anybody can work a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, Christians, spirit-filled Christians, you know, are going to work it better, have mm -hmm. better understanding of it. But, but that just shows how good God is. Yes. You know? um, Hallelujah. So unforgiveness will cause needless suffering. Reason 8, envy and strife. Uh, James 3, There's I think there's, it, he doesn't say it there, but there's, um, let, me make, let me see if it's in there, what I'm looking for. James 3, and he's got it listed uh, 13 to 18. Yeah, verse 16. Verse 16 is the only one. 
For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Mm. You know, so sickness is an evil work. So if there's envy and strife, Ooh. if you're in a work situation and you're going to work and you're just constantly fighting, every day it's a fight, every day it's a fight, every day. You know what I have in you? It's sick. Mm-hmm. You have a nervous breakdown. That's not a category. That's, that's not a class. Um, so, envy, envy and strive. Um, reason nine, lusting after evil things. First Corinthians ten six talks about that. We've got some examples of this we're going to get into. The Israelites were overthrown in the desert because of this. They were always lusting after other things. Leaving God and going after other gods, going after other idols, complaining about what God had done. Just all the time, what would happen? Well, they'd, get, they'd be a plague and 14,000 of them would die. Yeah. You know, why? Well, lusting after evil things. Reason 10, idols. Now, you all realize there are modern idols. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, Just you know, anybody. That certain truck. <laughs> that certain bass boat. <laughs> <laughs> a certain pair of shoes. Yeah. That Ford pickup truck I've always wanted. Yeah. Now need God knows shoes. now God knows you need yeah. shoes and God knows you need a you need a transportation. And God knows I need a bass boat. Yeah. Nine times <laughs> four. Turn through my boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. We had dogs and stuff. You know, but <laughs> the, the, yeah. these things can become uh, what is an idol? Well, I mean that, give me a, a generic Something definition of an idol. Something that's more important than God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you're more willing, you you know, you're pushing back your time to with the Word, so you can watch a TV show. That or TV show is your idol. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. you think is good intentions can turn into something bad. Yeah. That's, yeah, what, that's, that's the Martha and Mary thing. You know, what did God? What mm-hmm. did the Lord say to Martha? Martha, Martha. You know, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Mary's chosen an important thing. Mm-hmm. You know what? These people will get waited on. Mm-hmm. We are going to eat. But Mary, well, Mary decided to put that stuff down. Yeah, you know? yeah. all the work. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So it became it became an idol. It separated her from God. Reason eleven: fornication. This is something we talk about today. All the magazines, you know, um, we're adults, and we're, I hope that adults you know watch this thing. Uh, you walk through the supermarket, and and co- there's Cosmo magazine. Yeah, that is terrible. I heard a story once. A little boy who freaked out in the middle of the line, uh, didn't want it, like was moving away from the magazine racks, and the mom was like, what's wrong? He said, the woman there looks like she wants to eat me. <laughs> that's a really good That's, a good, that's, a, that's really a good analogy. analogy. Yeah. yeah. That's a good she, analogy. You know, she just wants to eat you up. She wants to devour you. <laughs> we, are, we are a sex-driven society. I used to teach a class uh, that had some statistical information in it, that talked about music videos. Now this is old information, but it really hadn't changed. Mm-hmm. In the 80s, they did a study and did on a percentage of music videos at the time that had sex scenes or innuendo and violence in them. Mm-hmm. And they were both like in 75% oh, of yes, all sir. videos had that in them. Yes, sir. Why? Because that sells. That's why they're doing that. But the point is, society has gone wholly over that way. And you know what? There was a day I remember it. No, I don't want to do that because I might catch something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. You yeah. know, we've, and so yes. we've kind of glossed over that. Do you know that yeah. herpes is permanent? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it is. That doesn't go away. Yeah. Um, we, we teach, we, I teach a music class and... and the list of composers throughout history who have become blind or deaf or died early from syphilis. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, reason 11, fornication, sex sins. Yes, um, sure. We read about this in the Old Testament. Um, your reference there, uh, point A, refers to Numbers 25, 1 to 8. These people committed harlotry that's a nice old English word for it, with the women of Moab. Mm-hmm. 24,000 died. Yeah. Reason 12, tempting Christ. It, I, I said this a little right while ago. Last night I was complaining to God. Um, 
I'd like to say that it was a effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man because I was really hot. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a fine line that that becomes murmuring against God. Mm-hmm. And the people murmured about the manna. That supernatural food that you're bringing us in the wilderness. And I mean, the plague went among them instantly. That's when, I think that's the one where, maybe I'll be right about this. Is that the one where the snakes, the serpents went yeah. through the camp? And I bit think so. so and, yeah, and bit so many of them, uh-huh. like 14,000 of them. Died. I, may be, I may be confusing my plagues and my murmurings, but the point is, all throughout the Old Testament, Israel was doing this, mm-hmm. and it always brought death or a plague, you know, just something terrible, uh, tempting Christ, murmuring and complaining. Reason 14, pride. Mm-hmm. Arrogance. Pride cometh before the fall. Needless suffering. Why? Because you're just all proud. Uh, reason 15, working yourself nearly to death. Yeah, I never thought about that until I read that last night too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this, this story of Epaphroditus. I had never seen this. I thought, no, that's not right. And I went and read that reference, and it is right. Yeah. Epaphroditus was so concerned with the ministry and what people might think that he worked himself nearly to death. Yeah. Me and my husband were actually reading this yeah. the day before I uh, went through it in the book, and I was like, "Wow!" Yeah, it's just it's just a real subtle thing that you just gloss yeah. over. You don't even see that, but that's yeah. really what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, so about good things, you know, you were talking about housework, and you you can be caught up in all these good things, mm-hmm. you think yeah. are godly things, but you know what? They at you're at we're actually putting them ahead of God, and so Epaphroditus was putting the ministry ahead of God, and it was costing him. The mm-hmm. Bible says, "Do everything in moderation, no matter what. Even if, if, if you're a godly man and you spend too much time in the Word and you forget your family, and you know, then that's a sin too." You, know? you have a responsibility to your family. God yeah. Balance yeah. It out. yeah. yeah. Uh, now, those are reasons Christians suffer needlessly. Let's mm-hmm. talk about yeah. scriptural sufferings for Christians. Now, I want to I want to point out just a couple of really important things here. Identifying with Christ's suffering is understanding He suffered so we don't have to. Remember I told you a lot of our relationship is based on uh, substitutionary processes. Okay? Oh, Christ suffered so I'm going to suffer. Oh, really? We're going to hang you on the cross? (laughs) Now I'm telling you, I know some Christians that would go there. Well, the floggings. People flog themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those people are so weird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to do that. that it's already that, been done. There was some movie, I don't remember what it was, where this person was going around like... Now they do it in the Philippines. They, they crucify. They, hurt they volunteer too. themselves and they oh, literally no. drive nails in their heads. It's, on, it's around Easter time every oh, year. Just you suicide. know what? That's, There's nothing that's, 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 that's stupid so and it's also arrogant. Yes, yeah, so that's mm-hmm. true. It's to think arrogant. you could save mankind. Um... Let's look at this a little bit. Mm-hmm. Acts 1, 1 through 3. I'm skipping some of these. There's just a couple points I want to make. I think we can do this pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the evidence is overwhelming. Um, yes. And so we'll just kind of hit the high points. Acts chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 3. Thank the you. former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after that he threw the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion, the passion refers to the cross, uh, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now the point I want to make here, and it says it there in point C, he presented himself alive after his suffering. A lot of these people in Christianity that supposedly love Suffering mm-hmm. will suffer from now until they go home to be with the Lord. Jesus' is suffering, the thing, the first thing we've got to see is that the suffering of the Lord did not end in destruction. Amen. That's good. Mm-hmm. It did not. Well, what did we read in Isaiah 54 That's a little good. while ago? I will forsake you for a little while, a short mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Not forsake you, I think it was, I forget the word actually was. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're talking about God turning his back on Jesus because he was sin. That was just for a short time. So the first thing we've got to understand about suffering, if you really are in some suffering for the Lord, and we're going to qualify that, 
realize it does not end in destruction. Jesus' suffering did not end in destruction. It ended in victory. Amen. Okay? Glory. His true suffering, point two there, was separation from God. Mm -hmm. And of course, we talked about that. Matthew 27, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, and, and God had to because He had become sin, which was God's plan for Him to become sin. It was also God's plan for Him that after He became sin, He'd resurrect Him from the dead. Mm -hmm. you know, so there, mm -hmm. there is an end to suffering, and suffering does not end in your destruction. How okay. can you really glorify Him if you do something like that and just die? You can't. Yeah. Now, what glory does he get in that if we lose? Yeah. Who? The point is, if we realize we're ambassadors with the ministry of reconciliation, well, who wants that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to win anybody with that message. Mm -hmm. um, point three: Because Jesus suffered and was separated from God, we don't have to suffer, suffer, or be separated from God. Okay. So, point B, how do we see disciples and apostles suffering? So, is there suffering for the Christian? Yes. Mm -hmm. Unequivocally, there is suffering. Point one, for righteousness' sake. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed mm -hmm. are you if you hunger and thirst after righteousness. So, when we're hungry for righteousness, the Bible says we're blessed. And then later in that same passage is, Blessed are you for being persecuted for righteousness. Yeah, that was, when yeah. I read that in there, I was... Oh, you know the way that he re like how he rephrases everything. It really like makes everything click. But what? But what is their suffering? They're being persecuted mm -hmm. because being of persecuted. their hunger for righteousness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And hunger and uh, thirst are really not pleasant feelings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm glad that's true. Sat I'm glad he satisfies us. Yeah. He's yeah. satisfied. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Point two, we suffer for His name's sake. Mm -hmm. When the world sees Jesus in us, sees His name mm -hmm. on us, in us, what will happen? They will persecute mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yes, sir. <laughs> and then what does? And then why does the devil attack us? For the word's sake. Bible the thing we're reading in Mark was it eleven. Let's go back there a second. There a minute? I think it was Mark 11. No. Mark 4. That's Mark 4. Mark 4. Thank you. Oh, glory. 14. The sower sows the word, and these are they led by the way. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Why does the devil take away immediately the word that's sown in our hearts? He's afraid of it. He's afraid of it. That's and he's good. really afraid of it if it bears if it if it sends down root. Yeah. You ever watch a crow in a cornfield? Mm -hmm. You plant corn and it comes out about that tall. Mm -hmm. Little little blade. A, a, a crow will walk down the will walk down the row and pull it out and eat the kernel off the end of it. He'll put, pull that up and eat the kernel. Pull the next one up and eat that kernel. Pull that. They're smart birds. Do you think he's going to do that after three weeks? Mm. And the plant's that tall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why does he come then? Because that's the only time he can really get it. It's the week. That's the only time he can pluck it out. Now, we've read about, you know, he can choke it with other things entering in, mm -hmm. but he really can't pull the seed out. And so the persecution comes, the attack from the devil comes, you know, you got this, you got this martyr complex, it's really because you think you are somebody, and we're really we're nobody. The persecution comes for the Word's sake, yeah. not for my sake. Yeah. It's going to come because of who I am. The devil wants to get the Word out of my heart. doesn't want it to send down root and grow and, and produce a fruit. It comes for the word's sake, not mine. So even if I'm suffering, it's not on the account of me. Whenever I would have troubles with, you know, I'd go a long time doing really good with studying the Bible and, and stuff, and then the devil would bring something up, try to tempt me or try to take me away from it. I used to always tell myself over and over, you know, he's just doing this because you're about to have a breakthrough or you're about to, you know, something awesome's about to happen, and he's scared and he doesn't want it to happen. That's exactly yeah. right. John 16, at the bottom of the page, These things I have spoken to you, that in me ye may have peace. 
in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I will overcome the world. So even when we're having tribulation, what did Jesus do with tribulation? He overcame it. You know, there's a great there's a great story about Jesus walking on the water. If you'll study that out, you know, they're all out there in the boat. Mm -hmm. And they go in about six hours, but Jesus walks in about one hour. <laughs> I mean, they're really struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'll study that, though, what you'll notice is that the waves and the wind do not go away when Jesus walks on the water. Mm -hmm. he, he walks on the stormy water. So he overcomes it. So he's saying, you are going to oh, have tribulation. Good. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I've overcome it. So what is the end of suffering? Victory. Overcoming. Not destruction. This, you know, I'm going to be martyred. You know, hang me on the cross. You know, uh, you know, boil me in oil. You know, uh, throw me overboard and maybe a big fish will swallow me or not. You know, all these ideas that Christians have. Well, I'm going to suffer for the glory of God. You know. Uh, or, or you know, one of my family members went home early, you know, or, or whatever it may be. You, you hear all these horror stories, um, you know, and oh, you know, they're taking it so patiently. Doesn't that give glory to God? No, it doesn't give glory to God. It means, one, they don't know the Word, and why would you want to serve a God that would maim you? You know, you think about those different people. Um, oh, I'm known for being opinionated. I'm just going to name it. Joni Erickson. Or Johnny Erickson. You probably before your all's time. She got married and became Johnny Erickson Tata. She was a paraplegic. And, and, and they thought, oh, she has such a wonderful Christian witness. Well, if she has such a wonderful Christian witness, get healed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, 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 how does God get glory with a paraplegic? How do, you know, and if anybody knows one, I'm sorry. If anybody in, in live streaming is one, I'm sorry. That doesn't bring glory to God. He doesn't want her to live that way. No, he doesn't want her he to live that to. way. He does not want her to live that way. Um, let's talk about martyrdom. Next page, yeah. Hebrews 11.35. You can send your letters to Family Worship Center. Attention, <laughs> attention, Cody Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Hebrews. Yeah. Hebrews. Oh. And he will see to it that I get them. <laughs> Hebrews 11.35 Some did not accept deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Well, that sounds like they, they, they were, you know, had a martyr complex. First of all, persecution, persecution, mm -hmm. not sickness and disease. Paul never accepted sickness and disease from the devil uh, or, or evil spirit oppression under any circumstances at any time. He never accepted it. And Jesus didn't either. Persecution to death uh, as, as persecution to death as martyrdom. And how is it? It says some did not accept deliverance. Nope, I'm going to go ahead and be a martyr. He says, I'll just go ahead and suffer. I'll suffer to death. That doesn't, that's not what it no. means when it said they did not accept deliverance. The offer was, if you deny the Lord, we'll let you up. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to deny the Lord. That's what it means when it says they did not accept deliverance. Mm -hmm. They were not willing to deny their faith. Uh, what did the three Hebrew children say? Throw us in the fire furnace. If God delivers us, great. If God doesn't deliver us, great. We're not going to bow down to the golden image. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really Amen. what that is about. Um, Glory. Point five. The apostles suffered persecutions, but did, but this did not include poverty and sickness. Famous scripture, and if, if you all understand, I know there's someone that will that will view this that will say, "Well, what about Paul's thorn in the flesh?" You know. And I love that. I'm glad you asked because I'm going to jump all over that with yeah. both feet and I'm going to borrow somebody else's feet and jump on yeah. it too. Um, what was God's answer to him? My grace, grace is sufficient for you. What is grace? Grace is divine influence on the heart and its reflection in the life. So when God said, my grace is sufficient for you, he didn't say, no, just bear that a while longer, Paul. He said, I've already given you the power to take care of it. it take care of it. Yes. He's given us the power to overcome yeah. the world. Please share the sicknesses in it. 
Yeah, that's right. Sickness is in the world, and Jesus said, don't worry, you're going to have tribulation, but I've overcome the world. It's it is now. overcome now. Back to this already, not yet. Mm-hmm. When is it available is. to us? Um, point two perfect. under C, does God, or C, does God teach us anything in sickness? Does, does sickness teach us anything? Uh, I, I'll, I'll read what, that, what he says there, and that, but I'm going to say one thing first. I'm a father, mm-hmm. and I would never put sickness on my sons mm-hmm. to teach them something. Now, here's the thing. I'm not a better father than God. In mm-hmm. fact, God is an infinitely better father than me, and if I wouldn't do it as an earthly father, why would my heavenly father do it? It's mm-hmm. just stupid. You just have to disengage your brain to think that way. Point two, God intends that we learn from the Word and the Spirit. Not from sickness, disease, or any other consequence of disobeying the Word. Because what was the result of sin? Sickness and death. And so if that's what sin brings, why would God use sin if we have the Holy Ghost and the Word to speak to our hearts? Makes no sense. You gotta have I say you gotta have help to be that stupid. Blaine Bowman says that's supernaturally stupid. Yeah, super <laughs> brother Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> now, point D. This is a fair question then. Supernaturally stupid. Fair question. What Thank is you, the David. suffering we as Christians are called to? Point three under there. Suffering for the Christian is to cease from sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, read First Peter 4, 1 and 2, the next page, page 39. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh, suffered in the flesh, it has, is, ceased from sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what suffering is. You're putting the flesh, the desires of the flesh to death. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about the desire to live. You know, we've been running that martyrdom circle here for a little while. Hebrews 12, 3 and 4, Or consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, the crucifixion, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. The suffering is the resisting sin because your body with everything, your physical body with everything in it wants to sin. It wants to eat too much. It wants to fornicate. It wants to cuss. It wants to lay around and sleep. It wants to. It wants to get get. You know. It wants to weigh 550 pounds. It, you know. It just. It does not want to get out of bed. It does not want to mow the grass. You know. All these things. That you're, and so, what are you doing? The suffering is to resist the natural tendency of the flesh. But remember, it's two to one: spirit, soul, against the body. If people understood that, it'd be pretty awesome because yourself is hard to deal with in Satan. Yeah. And he knows that, and that's where he attacks you. Mm-hmm. That's where he tempts you. Yeah. Um, and, and good point. Thank you for that segue, Janet. Point four: Only with the help of God yes. can we cease from sin by dying to the flesh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, mm. Point B under five B. Five B. There is good. We're about to finish up. You become willing to pay the price that it takes to be a vessel of honor, fit for the master's use. What are we doing? We're walking out the word. We're resisting sin. Our suffering, our struggle, is in the resisting of sin. As, it's, as it is in the public and in the community, trying to force its way on us, mm-hmm. as our flesh is saying, no, I want to do this, and you're saying, no, you're not going to have that third Coke tonight. <laughs> you know, yeah. not going to have the first one. Um, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's what Christians suffer mm-hmm. against. Because everything else, the promises of God are yes and amen. In conclusion, 1A, when tempted, resist with the Word of God, and that is faith. When we put the Word of God on the inside of us, faith moves, faith speaks. This is called principles of faith. We've come around this in a lot of different ways over the last three and a half weeks. Um, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a test. I'm going to take a little break before that just to let you clear your minds. You may use your notes uh, this month. You may use your notes. Um, and so uh, anybody in Wilder has any questions just for tonight, you know, not if you're viewing this um, you know, at a later date, but uh, what is this, October 1st? Yeah, October 1st. Um, 
My phone number is 502-525-1400. If you have questions about the test, the test you can call me probably for the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes. But uh, we're going to take, take a 10-minute break, and then we're going to take a test, and you can use your notes. And it's an easy test. It's true, false, and multiple guess.